Welcome back to the Bigfoot Truck Camper Renovation Series. In this episode, we're going to be updating the interior, giving some new wallpaper and a backsplash in behind the sink and the stove. This baby's original, 1997, so it's time for a facelift. Come on, let's get started. So I'm gonna be taking down um, anything that's purple basically today um, so that I can get it ready to put up some new wallpaper. Uh, we're going to be doing um, some kind of a headboard behind me. I think I'm going to wallpaper it, um, but this entire bed area up here needs new wallpaper. Um, as you can see here, we've had a little bit of like condensation damage in here. So it's starting the original wallpaper starting to peel away. And then down here at the base of the windows, again, condensation. It's not leaking, there's no rot in behind it. It's just old and um, condensation happens, right? So um, yeah, so I gotta cut away the wallpaper. I'm gonna try and leave the bulk of the wallpaper on the wall, anything that's good and stuck, I'm gonna try and leave it if I can. If it looks like it might come through the new wallpaper, I'm gonna remove it. So it's just all gonna depend on how well it comes off, how smooth I can get it. I could probably do a little bit of sanding. Once I have everything off, I am gonna give it a good treatment with um, like a good cleaner, probably like a TSP or, or something, or like a natural prep or something like that that you would not normally clean your walls with before you put up wallpaper or put fresh paint up. One of the two, I will treat it like that so it's all good and ready for the new wallpaper. Doing that through the bathroom, the main living space as well, and getting everything ready for its new look. All right, I'm gonna cut, gonna try cutting away some of this wallpaper. We are gonna take the windows out to reseal them, so I'm gonna be able to get anything that's in behind the uh, these frames as well. I just don't want to take them out right now. We did that when we were renovating the interior of the Duchess, thinking that the butyl tape that was on there was going to be strong enough to hold our windows in place, and it turned out that it wasn't, and they started to fall out. So we're not going to do that on this one. <laughs> so I'm not going to take this frame off until we know for sure, for sure that that day is going to be the day that we um, replace the butyl tape and put the windows back in. For now, I am just going to cut away this loose wallpaper. It's a good start anyway. Eh, it just peels right off. So it's, uh, it's also really, really brittle. You see, it just kind of, just kind of breaks. It's pretty old. So as I say, there's going to be a little bit more on the back side that I'm going to have to get to. And I think it's, you know what, it's really smooth. So I'm just going to go down a little bit further. I can see that it's loose here still. So I'm just going to cut down a little bit further and then before I put the, the new stuff up, I'm just going to give it a really light sand just to get rid of that ridge. But really, the new stuff is really quite thick, so I don't think that you're even going to notice it. It's also going to be a little bit textured, so I think it's going to be okay. I don't, uh, I don't foresee having to strip the walls right down to bare wood. Seems to be good. And there's good news and bad news on the wallpaper front. So the good news is that most of the stuff just peeled right off, which was awesome. And where it is still like where it's stuck, it's like really stuck. So I'm really glad that I didn't just decide that I was going to try and peel it all off because it's really stuck. So I can be confident that once I give it a good clean and put the new wallpaper up, it's going to have a good strong surface to uh, to hang on to, <clears throat> it's not going to, um, I don't have to worry that the wallpaper underneath it is gonna peel off, that it's not um, adhered anymore because it, it is really, really stuck. Bad news is this window leaked. So there we had more than just some condensation damage. So down here, you can see 
it's really soft. So it's wet, so it's still leaking. So we're gonna have to see how far down it goes. Hopefully it doesn't go into this storage bin. And we're gonna have to definitely seal up this window ASAP. And um, yeah, it's really soft. Probably replace a piece of wood underneath. We'll have to, we'll know more when we take the window out how far down the damage goes and um, do some repairs. I just opened up the um, little storage cubby down in here and the wall is solid down in here. And there's no moisture. So I suspect that it just sort of soaked its way down to here and um, puddled. Didn't make its way all the way down too much. But we will put the dehumidifier in here and try and dry it out a little bit. It seems to be just the top layer. This is still really solid. It's not squishy or like I can't break through it or anything like that. So that is good. Hopefully it just needs a good dry out. And then, I don't know, we'll see what, what board suggests. But yeah, in here, it's dry. There's no, I don't feel anything wet in here at all. So, and there's nothing bubbling and nothing soft. So that's good. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It's free and greatly supports the channel. You can also consider checking out our Patreon page. The link is right here, as well as in the description. And there you can get some real-time updates, behind-the-scenes content, and more. Hope to see you there. Alright, in the kitchen we have the same sort of good news, bad news situation. Good news is the Wallpaper came off pretty good and where it is stuck, it's really, really stuck. This entire area is going to be um, covered with um, sticky tiles, peel and stick pa sticky tiles. Um, whoever invented those, like high five, man, because they are lightweight. They stick really, really well and it's a nice little quick fix, just sort of a nice little upgrade for your RV. Um, so yeah, so this whole section here is going to get covered with those right right up to the ceiling. So what is stuck is stuck really well. Bad news situation down here. Yeah, it's wet again. Nowhere near, it's not as bad as in the bedroom. Um, and it's just this corner and it didn't, it doesn't go down. So it just sort of stops here. But again, this is something we're gonna have to dry out. These um, windows that leaked a little bit, um, whether it's leaking, condensation, I think a little bit of leaking though, they had uh, definitely had some seal issues. But uh, you can see where the plywood on the wall started to delaminate. And uh, this is bonded to um, styrofoam, so, I don't think we want to pull this inner layer off because it's bonded to the styrofoam good. I don't know how it's going to separate. I'm sure we could do it if we had to, but uh, it looks like the delamination, it's peeling away the outer layer and this inner layer is still solid. So um, uh, you can see I drew with a marker here. Um, so maybe I should go over a little bit more over to uh, where the plywood's not damaged, where it's still stuck together. And uh, I'm gonna get my um, reciprocating, reciprocating, oscillating saw and carefully cut along the line. I think I'm gonna draw this line over a little bit more to get into some better wood over here. And uh, we'll cut that out, peel off the layer that we have peeled off here already. Same thing over here, go back to there, peel that off, make it nice and clean and smooth. And then um, I found some uh, thin plywood, 
which is uh, a paneling. It's actually some sort of a white paneling. I had a little piece laying around, not sure what it's from, but um, I'm going to uh, cut that out and uh, I'll glue it on with the white in. That way um, we'll have a smooth surface on there for Marianne's wallpaper to go on and uh, we should be able to get a pretty even finish and um, not be noticeable anymore. We're gonna have to do that here and I think a little strip underneath the kitchen window maybe, but I think he's putting tile there, so um, I'll do what I have to do. Okay, so I was able to get all that off of there. I had to kind of pry it off with the uh, scraper a bit. And I did clean up a little bit of the stuck the stuff that was stuck around the edges with this thing. And uh, I think we got a pretty good line there now to follow with our patch. And uh, I'll have to take this frame out to finish the little edge there. And, um, but I'll get this side cleaned up over here and then uh, maybe I'll take that frame out and trace out my uh, filler. Cut my patch a little bit on the large side. I think uh, to get it to match well, I'm better off to do it this way. In case it's not perfectly square. Mark my window opening here. Then I will use the frame to trace the angle on. Okay, so I got the corner cut on that and the edge of the wall trimmed out a little more over here. Let's see where we're at. Oh, looks like we got a pretty good fit. Got some uh, contact cement. I actually use this Gorilla spray adhesive. Probably a brush on uh, contact cement would be more effective in this cir circumstance, but um, I think this will do the trick. Just gonna use my blank that I cut out to protect the window from getting sprayed. So uh, I already sprayed, I sanded the uh, patch piece with uh, 60 grit on the uh, uh, palm, orbital palm sander and um, I sprayed that with glue already so we'll let this tack up for five minutes or so and then stick her on. I read the directions on the can, it says you only got to let it tack up for one minute so it's been longer than that. We'll uh, stick her on. There, we got a pretty even thickness. I don't know if we might want to fill the seam a little bit with something. I left it for a few minutes and came back and this bottom corner was lifting up a little bit. So I, uh, I think it's because the window is squeezing it up here and kind of pulling it out. So I just kind of got a couple scraps of wood and stuck wedge this board in here just to push down on it. I think I'm going to uh, hit the crack with a little bit of latex caulking just to uh, fill the gap. That way uh, you won't see a line in the in the wallpaper when she puts it on. There we go. Ready for wallpaper. Now that we have all the uh, windows resealed, it's safe for me now to come along and take off all the uh, trim on the inside of the windows and start putting up our wallpaper. So I'm gonna start today up here in the bed area. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the walls a wash. I have uh, this product called Safe Prep very similar to TSP. Uh, what it's just going to do is remove any dirt and grease and grime that's on the walls. This one's just a little bit gentler um, than TSP but does the exact same thing. So I'm going to give them a quick spray down and a wipe and get them nice and clean and then I'm going to start. I uh, 
picked up some peel and stick wallpaper off of Amazon. Kind of this looks like grass cloth, so it's a little bit of a texture. Um, but it'll be a nice little update to the area up here. And then above our headboard, I actually have a patterned wallpaper that I'm going to put up. But we're going to start with this first. So um, really peel and stick wallpaper is pretty easy. If you've ever put like shelf liner down or anything on the end, it is really, really simple. Cut it to fit, peel the back off and smooth it on. So it's a little bit noisy. Gord's replacing the roof vent in the bathroom, so there might be a little bit of banging going on. But I use this tool here, it's just a smoother. I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but I don't know, just a smoother. Um, we use this, uh, use these at the shop too, when we would put on vinyl decals, registration numbers and things like that, works like a charm. So peel the back off, get it nice and positioned, and smooth it on, smooth out any bubbles. If you happen to miss a bubble, you can go along later with a utility knife, put a little slit in the bubble and just smooth it back out. So it's really forgiving. You can peel, if you don't push it down too hard, you can actually peel it off and kind of reposition a little bit. It's not hard, it's just finicky. It takes some time and some patience, but uh, really all you need. So yeah, so only tools I have, I have a, a large ruler, I have a pen, some scissors, the smoother, that's all you need. So let's get started. If you've renovated an RV, you know that there is not a stray wall in any of them. The ceiling slope, the cabinet slope, everything slopes. So starting out with a straight edge is kind of difficult. So in this case, I'm starting on this wall on the inside here, and there's this trim that runs around the corner, this corner molding. So I'm gonna use that. That's where I'm gonna start. Straight, oh, for the best. Work my way into the corner and then go across. When I come to this wall, I'm only going down to here. If you remember, I pulled out this cabinet that's here it's going back in so there's no need for me to continue with the uh, wallpaper down into the cabinet because everything is fine down there so away we go so as you can see the backing just easily pulls off start with a little bit your first row is always the hardest. The nice thing about this particular wallpaper with it being a grass cloth is as I go along, I don't have to worry about matching up a pattern. So that's going to be really great. So I'm just going a little bit long at the top just so that I can come in after with um, a utility knife and I can trim it off along the top. But I'm just going to go along and get my edge my starter edge, nice and straight. Once I have that established, then I can just smooth it across. So in this case, I'm actually going to tear the backing off my initial start strip. So rather than pull off the backing of the entire sheet, I just want the starter edge. I'm sure that they're are some interior decorator people that do this for a living that know better secrets than I have. This is what works for me. If you've got a tip for me on how to make life a heck of a lot easier putting this up, drop me a comment. I'd love to know if there's a better way to do it. That's our first piece. So that actually went up really nice. The nice thing with um, this particular type of wallpaper is that it does have a texture to it. 
so it it's nice to hide those little imperfections that are in the wall and behind. There was a few old screw holes and different things like that. And then there's spots, you know, um, where I had taken off the wallpaper bits that were, that had gotten the water damage. So it's just going to cover over that really nice and, and hide, um, yeah, those little tiny imperfections. So that went up really nice. So along the top and down at the bottom, I'm still going to have to go along there with razor knife and trim it off, but we're on our way. There's a little before and after the before with the purple and the blue and I don't know, I think there's a little green in there, I think. Um, and then the new grass cloth. Well, day two of wallpaper is well underway. I have, I'd say three quarters of the camper done in the um, grass cloth, which is great. Um, I have a little bit of finicky trim left around the bathroom door and I do have to order another roll um, for the side walls of the bed. Um, and I discovered that there's another piece that goes over top of the kitchen sink. So, which I didn't account for. So I need one more roll, which is fine. Um, so right now what I'm working on is our headboard. So first piece is up and uh, we'll get this up and completed and just wait for the other roll of the grass cloth to arrive. Well, there we go. Turns out that I actually did have enough of the uh, black wallpaper to do the sides, so that's great. Uh, but it's going to look significantly different once the bedding is in. We're moving now on to the backsplash in the kitchen area. So we've got these peel and stick tiles that, uh, again, I picked up off of Amazon. I've never done these before. Apparently, it's just like wallpaper. You just have to be patient and take your time. So we'll see how I do. But uh, I've started by removing uh, the fan and any of the spice holders and towel holders and whatnot that were up in here. I got rid of anything that was any loose wallpaper and just like I did to prep the walls for the wallpaper and the rest of the rig. And then um, again, I used that formula with the um, with the cleaner similar to TSP and went and hit all these walls. I'm going to go over these walls a couple of times because it is the kitchen area and they do tend to be greasier than anywhere else in the rig. So I'll make sure that they're good and clean and dry prior to starting the, uh, the tiles. I started with marking um, a level line on the wall all the way across at 12 inches. These are 12 by 12 tiles. So I marked mark my level line so I know how to line up my tops. And then I also cut the jagged edge off so, so it's square to start on my outer wall. Um, you will need a really sharp pair of scissors for this. So we'll uh, put the first one up and hope for the best. So these just, a little finicky, but they just peel off the backing so you just peel off. Ooh, put them on and hope for the best. That's one. So to smooth them on, I just used the same little smoother tool um, that I used for the wallpaper. And then I just took the backer because they, they're a little bit sticky, I guess. They're, they're like clearly not a tile, right? But So I just put this over top and then applied the pressure to stick them on. 
You can reposition these as long as you put them on lightly, but once you do the squeegee like I just did, you can't take them off anymore. Well, if, or if you do, you can't reposition them. So that one's on, pile number two. So you'll see they actually tell you, it says overlap here. So that's on the outside. Then you've got the jagged edge on here, which in the perfect world, they just line right up, which they do. So perfect. Put the next one on. I uh, used the corner of the smoother and I went along that little edge where they overlapped just to make sure that there was a good tight seal there. And yeah, that worked great. There we go. Finished product. Pretty happy with how that uh, turned out. A little finicky, but as I was saying earlier, just take some patience, a little bit of time. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So all the wallpapering in the main part of the camper is all done. Now all I have left is the bathroom, but we have a little bit of work to do in there yet. I didn't take the mirror off. Um, same reason I didn't take the mirror off in the hallway. Across from the kitchen, they're glued to the wall. So I have to wallpaper around them because I don't want to risk breaking them. Alrighty, so that is all the wallpaper done in here. Wallpaper, tile, um, that was a big job, but it's all done. Uh, I do have just a couple of little panels that I think I'm going to put on the um, outside of our bathroom door because it's just this huge wooden door that's showing its age. So I think I'm going to insert some panels similar to our headboard just to kind of pull it through the whole trailer, but uh, I'm not 100% sure yet. So it's going to be a surprise. Wait and see what happens. But uh, so that's it. Um, other kind of little things that I did do around here is I changed all the knobs on all the doors as well and um, everything's starting to come together so you know again it's easy takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time but really gives your camper a whole new look by the time it's uh, all finished so we will see you in the next episode of our renovation series bye for now Bigfoot Chuck Camper <laughs> Renovation Series. Now that uh, 